morning welcome back to the channel it is wednesday the first of november and it has been over three weeks since i posted a video and that is because if you didn't know i had appendicitis uh, which means that i've had an operation to have my appendix removed and the doctor signed me off work for two weeks uh, i wasn't allowed to do any heavy lifting or out like that so i was signed off and then uh, I had a week's holiday booked away with my family. So yeah, I've had three weeks of sort of not doing much, uh, which has actually been quite nice because I don't often give myself the excuse to do not much. So um, having that excuse to do mu not much has been quite nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to be back. Um, when I... When I when I when I kind of left work, I left quite a lot of plates spinning. There was a number of machines that were needing return visits, um, a number of machines that I'd sort of diagnosed over the phone, and I was going to be there the following week. And obviously, I never got round to them. So, um, my colleagues have done a tremendous job of getting round to all these. Not very nice jobs to go to when you haven't started the job, I'll be honest. Like removing injectors and uh, sort of having to go back and fit injectors, having not sort of started the job yourself. I mean, I know I would hate to have to go to jobs like that. Um, you know, doing jobs that you haven't started isn't much fun. So I really appreciate them sort of doing all that they have done. And to be fair, I've come back to a very small list of jobs to do, which would be nice to sort of ease myself back into it again, get back into the rhythm. Um, my phone is no longer diverted to my boss, so we'll start to accumulate some jobs. But um, yeah, today I am basically just doing a fact-finding mission. Would you call it that? Basically, I've got to go and take some measurements and compare them to whether it is within or out of factory spec. Um, so what all of that I can show you I don't really think that it's something that is for this but we'll see I don't think it will be but we can go and have a chat and uh, see what we can see on our travels um, but yeah get used to doing this again right let's go so I am on site down in not so sunny South Cumbria and um, what I'll be able to show you is bits and pieces and um, I'm not show you the model of the machine or the customer's name on the machine things like that um, because it's an ongoing uh, evaluation um, but what I can show you is what I'm gonna do and um, so the customer complaint is that when he's slewing and he comes to a stop it sort of bounces and it rocks like that um, so what we're going to do, or what I'm trying to do, is work out how many degrees it's bouncing and determine whether or not that is or isn't within spec. Um, so, if you look at the drawings that I've got here, that's me there, look. I'm going to stretch the arm right out and we're going to move it left to right. I've got a DTI gauge that I'm going to put on the track frame and a slew ring bolt. Um, and we're going to measure, when we wobble the bucket left to right, we're going to measure this play here. And then we'll be able to divide that measurement in two, which will then give us the angle at which it's deflecting. And that angle will then determine whether or not it is or isn't within spec. Because we'll measure that, put that into this equation here hopefully work out <laughs> what it <laughs> whether it is or isn't within spec i mean to me it's, uh, it's a bit rocky like um and to me it's sort of like the slew motor uh pinion gear has play on the swing the slew ring so that's what I'm here to do anyway. So we'll go and have a look. So we can look at this now. Can you wobble it? It's 
So the middle, this, this gauge here is reading mil, this is reading one rotation of this big one is one mil and this is, that's doing like three mil. So I'm off site now, I've gathered my information and done my maths. So we want to work out what the play is between here and here. That play there was 3.1 millimetres. The outside circumference of the slew ring is 2,630 millimetres. So to work out what each degree of that is, we divide it by 360 degrees, which is 7.3 millimetres. So every 7.3 mil around the circumference of the slew ring is one degree so we had 3.1 mil of play from this point here to this point here so we times 7.3 by 3.1 which gives us 22.6 and that's degrees so between this point here and this point here is 22.6 degrees so between this point here and this point here is 11.3 degrees and that is how much play we've got between the pinion on the slew motor and the slew ring so that's the gap between this point here and this point here so what it's doing is it's bouncing between there and there does that make sense i hope it does so now what we'll do is we'll go back and look at what is acceptable and what isn't and go from there and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, yeah, it was very clarty that um, and very wet. It actually really, really, really rained, um, which I'm not used to having been in the house or being on holiday. <laughs> so we're back into it, winter is coming. Um, it is quarter to, what is it? Quarter to, is that the right time? Have I changed the van time? Yeah, quarter to three. Quarter to three. So yeah, by the time I get back up to Carlisle, it will be knocking on towards five o'clock. So I'll point the van up towards home and um, I'll see you in the morning, that's all right. Morning. It's, what's it today? Thursday. Me and Dave here, we're gonna um, do a bit of work on that 225. There's a little bit of welding to do. And Dave is our welder. Um, and also got the boom foot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna slip a couple of shims into this boom. Um, so the, there's a bracket up there that holds those steel pipes. That bracket up there, you can see there that it's cracked. So we're just gonna zip that up with a bit of weld. And then up in here, oh, the operator's noticed that there's a little bit, of, little bit of play side to side. So we just wanna nip that up because it's done 1600 hours. So we're just gonna give that a bit of a tighten up. So. Uh, we're going to try and slip a couple of shims into here, probably on that far side. We'll just pull the, we'll do the wider bucket, a ditching bucket ideally. But anyway, uh, we're just going to pull the pin out so it's out of that boss down here. Slide the pin that way and then we'll try and persuade the, uh, the whole boom across the way and try and slide a shim into there. Just when I serviced it before I had my uh, operation there. I didn't film the service actually. I was in a right bad mood that day, if you remember all the way back to when I was in a bad mood once. Um, it, the operator notices a bit of play side to side, so we'll just take that up. Um, right, I need to go and get my machine key. We'll fire it up and uh, we'll get it moved. Wow, so this is the first time I've sat in a machine for three weeks now. I never even sat in one yesterday. Um, so, I'll let the machine do its warm up first. Treat it right, but yeah, I'm hoping 
when I've done, when I've added trims into booms in the past, um, so I hit a miss when you pull that pin out, whether the boom just cockles over ever so slightly and have a bit of a fight getting that pin back in. Um, and other times you do it, you pull the pin out, slip a shim in, shove the pin back in by hand. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we go. Storm Kieran's on its way as well. The wind's starting to pick up. Uh, so hopefully we're not out in the elements too long. We're fairly sheltered in here. Right, I'll get this machine spun round and in a position for Dave to work on it. Right, so I've got my tab off. You'll have to excuse the noise. That's Dave doing Dave stuff. Hopefully. No, I'm not. I thought I had it in the sweet spot, look, but it's tight. We've got our battery and stuff disconnected at the moment while Dave does the welding, so... We'll, uh, we'll let Dave do his thing. I'll, uh, I'll get him to sit on the seat anyway, and we'll just find a sweet spot and just pray it out with that. Shouldn't need any hammer. There is a threaded hole here. You can put a bit of threaded bar in for a slide hammer. Um, you should never really have to do that. The machine's been well greased, as you can see, so um, it should just slide out. It should. That's my old van there, look. <laughs> old van, new van. <laughs> so Dave's on it now. Let's see if we can find a sweet spot. Oh, I can't get that in there. Go on there a bit. In the end got it slid out and you can see there it looks tight at the moment but there's space at this side so we're going to try and uh, move the boom over and just slip a shim in that side so uh, I won't probably be able to do this and film at the same time so we've got a shim put in there now taking out this thin, thin shim here and I thought I'll try and double it up so I tried two new thin shims. We could get it so far, but just couldn't get it all the way in. They're a nylon shim, so you can't hammer them or do out with them. And I tried a heavy shim, which is essentially just shy of two of these shims together. Um, and we got that in. So that should be all nice and tight now. We're just gonna try and get this pin slid back in. I think everything's lined up, so we'll see. Right, there we go, job bossed. Um, yeah, I didn't take any hammering in. Nice and easy. Dave's got a big hide hammer, look. They haven't even damaged the paint. You'd never even know we were in there, look. Happy days. Right, Storm Kieran's on its way, so we're gonna, we're gonna get packed up. Right, there we go, just before lunch, is it? No, it's not even lunch time yet. Half past 11. So I'll get back to Carlisle for lunch time and then I'm going to put some brakes in the van because they're a bit noisy when I'm stopping. I don't know whether it's because the van's been parked up for so long, um, but it, better have a look at them. Because the, the van's done 50,000 now. Has it done 50,000 or am I 49? I'll tell you in a sec. Oh yes, oh, I'm on 51. 51 and a half thousand miles I've done, so... I would imagine the brakes are wanting changed. Although, that old van of mine, it would tell you when it needed brakes. Sometimes it would tell you when it didn't need, a break, didn't need brakes, but I would have thought precision German engineering like a sprinter would tell you when it needs brakes, but 
something not happy in the back anyway, so we'll go and have a look. Right then, I've had my lunch. I've got my van on an axle stand, so don't worry, I'm not working underneath a, a jack, for anybody that's concerned. Um, I've dropped, taken the handbrake off just to see, and... There was a definite grinding noise a second ago. <laughs> there. Can you hear that? I think it's just a stone in it. Anyway, I'll take the wheel off and see what it's like. Looking through the hole at the pads, there seems to still be a fair bit of meat on the bone like, so we'll see. We'll see. Mmm. Sounds to me like something's stuck between a disc and this back plate. The disc has got a decent groove in it but it's fairly smooth. There's still uh, plenty of meat on the pad there, you can see, on that side and on the back here. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll run it till it's serviced and we'll get the discs changed with the pads. I know some of you might say that the pad might be all right, but you're in there, you might as well just do it all as I want to. Um, what I'll probably do is try and see if there's a, a way of getting that away from there. I'm sure there's something in there, like it's sort of a that kind of a noise, isn't it? There's a stone between there and there. I haven't tried the other side yet. Maybe do that now, see if the other side is noisy. It might just be a stone or something in the back of here. Get up. Just enough so that the wheel's off the ground there. Uh, that's off. Let's have a listen. Yeah, this side's all right. It's definitely on that other side. Ha! Good. Right. As long as that's all it is, my brakes are brakes are in good condition, so just gotta try and get what it is in the back of here out. Right, so I've got the caliper off. I've managed to save the brake wear indicator doodah thing there, look. Uh, just slide them off. Slide them off and then looks like this is a brake drum as well because the park brake and the handbrake cable goes into here so I presume this is like a brake park brake assembly type of idea. It's gotta just take the disc off and just give everything a good clean out. Hmm, learning, I'm sure there's van mechanics and car mechanics watching me do this going, Christ almighty, what are you doing, lad? <laughs> oh dear. Right, I'll tell you what I need. I need the professional struggler. He'll know what to do. So I've got the brake carrier off. Those bolts were FT. I mean FT. Hellfire. Um, there's my brake shoes. Plenty of life left in them. Here's a question for you. Some folks say you shouldn't, others say you should. Do you lubricate the slides with a bit of copper grease? Let us know in the comments, there's a question for you. I thought that was a bit of copper grease in there, but it's just rust. <laughs> oh God, should I just change these pads anyway? Uh, that one's actually got a crack in it, look. I maybe should just do, oh, I'm gonna do it. I'll change the pads. I've seen that crack now. Can you see it? The better I'd do. <sighs> oh well, at least I won't need a wind back tool because it'll just be to squeeze in with a G clamp. Just sit him on there like that. Just it. Right, uh, need a little Torx bit now, which I'm gonna snap into there, and uh, that'll be the job done, won't it? <laughs> yes, 
it does look like it. it's not a special one that is it let's go and find out <laughs> I don't know if I'm jammy or not, but I did give the uh, socket a few good traps with the hammer. I'll just gently take that out. See what's behind here. So it looks like, yeah, I've got a drum brake and caliper brakes on the back. Didn't know that. Learning. Aha, I've got it off. Give them a little bit of a rough up with a bit of emery tape. There doesn't seem to be anything stuck behind here, so whatever will have been there will have fallen out, I would imagine. Not unless it was something inside here, which you can see there's a decent bit of stuff. That'll just be, I would imagine the dust will get in there from the forestry roads and sort of make noises too. There's, I can't see anything. On here that's been scratching. Maybe there, look. Anyway, I'm gonna put new pads in it and I'm gonna just give everything a clean up and we'll do to the side. I'll not bother with the fronts. Oh, see what time of day it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, just a bit of brake cleaner and a Give them a bit of a rough up. Give everything a clean out. Oh, see, look, I was wondering how you get the springs out if you ever needed to replace them. Look, you, you line it up like that, see? You can get your springs then. That's clever like. Unless you're adjuster there, look. How do you adjust them? See on the forklifts that I used to, back in the day, you'd have a little rubber bung in the back of here and you'd get a screwdriver in and adjust them. And then some of them, I think you just pulled the handbrake on and off and it would adjust it up. I don't know. Long time ago that now. Mm. Right, I'll give this a clean up. So I've given everything a good clean up as you can see from the muck on the floor. We'll pop this back on and then uh, go and ratch my new pads out and a uh, bit of luck we'll have this fixed. That's brake tab. Half a can of brake cleaner all over it. It's all nice and cleaned up now. Um, yeah, progress is good. Not my favourite job working on bands like, but uh, yeah, in fact I'll just give Give that a bit of a clean up first, actually. Just uh, I've got my new disc brake, new disc, new, pa new pads fitted, and I realised <laughs> you putting us down in the comments whether or not they should be lubricated. Well, I put a bit of copper, copper grease on here and up here, both sides. Um, I've also got the new wear indicator, although there was nothing wrong with that one. I don't think. Um, there's like a little metal tab in there that holds it in place so the way it works is once that disc wears down see here that's going to be fitted into there like that so once the disc wears the plastic off the top of there it basically joins these wires together it'll put a message on the dash and tell me that my brake pads are low that's why i couldn't work it out because uh, i thought there's a bit of a rumbling noise as well my brakes are Got no meat left on the bone. Um, so that's why I wasn't sure whether or not I did need brakes, but might as well while I'm in here. Eh? So, right, uh, get this caliper jostled back into place. I've just squeezed it in. Dead easy to squeeze in, didn't even need, bite. Didn't even need a G clamp, just these big filter players has squeezed that in sufficiently. Um, yeah. Going well, as well as can be. There we go. Do it all again on the other side now. Uh, well, no, I'm not going to do it all again. I'm just going to do the pads on the other side. <sighs> yes. Right, come on. Let's have a bit more go about you out. Hmm.
Right, so now we've done that side, we'll pump the brakes. Oh, right, we've got a bit of pedal there now. Grand. And then uh, I've left the caps off, I've run the wheel nuts up with the gun. Um, but I'll put a bar on them now, just make sure they're all the same. We've all got a good nip. Never ever rely on the gun to tighten something up. Always check it. Always. Oh yeah, and um, that was the brake shoes on the far side. Much more worn. And that one has also got a crack in it. That was me when I dropped some on it before. Anyway, job's done. I'll put them front ones in the van. Put them on me when I get round to it list. So, one more thing before I round the video up for that for today. Um, remember that maths equation that I was mentioning earlier in the video? Well, I made a mistake on that. I will be honest. So, it isn't 22.6 degrees of play. Instead of times in that, I should have divided it, which gives it 0 0.39 degrees of play. And the tolerance was 0 0.25 degrees of play. So anything greater than 0 0.25 is out of spec. Okay, so when I saw 22.6 degrees, I was like, whoa, that is way out, way out, but yeah. It's nearly twice out, so it's still not good, but it's not, <laughs> it's not miles and miles out like I thought. So I thought I'd correct myself on that, just in case there's any other maths wizards that watch this video and they tell me, just hold on a minute. Because um, I sent, well, basically I sent the picture of that through to my boss and I said, I think that's right, what do you think? And he was like, close but instead of times in it at the end you should divide it at the end so there we go i've learned something there and i hope you lot have as well thanks very much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please give it a like if you haven't already click the subscribe button and for more bits and pieces throughout the week check out ali's digger diary on instagram and sometimes tiktok as well right it's good to be back and we'll see you in the next one